Hello, I'm just going to make this video because I want, just want to be able to have a generic response because in the comments in regards to other uh, videos, I did some on the Thunder Stone, which was the heaviest stone ever moved and it was moved in the, the modern period, but again, before cranes without animals. Um, but again, there is just this tendency that, uh, uh, not to accept these facts because it, it doesn't fit the religion. And so just at some examples of some of the heaviest, you know, these, these would rank amongst the heaviest stones moved, not in antiquity, not just antiquity, but uh, also in the recent period, because we're, we're, it's, there's no there's no industry for that anymore. People don't work that way anymore, but could they do it? So let's start with Cleopatra's Needle in London. It's one of a twin. The other is in New York. It is 224 tons. Now, because certain people like to talk about pounds to give it this added when they talk about ancient stones, well, that's 448,000 pounds. So let's talk in pounds as well. This was how it was lifted into place with wood and rope and no need for modern cranes or, or mechanical um, for steam or that. It was basically manpower, wood and rope. That was how they did it. This is ancient technology. This is actually based on the ancient descriptions of how they moved even heavier stones. Um, Give me a second. Okay, I'm going to put this in the, in the description. It's a English translation of a book on architecture from the first century by Vitruvius. Now, in the book, this is, you know, whatever your interests are, I'm guaranteed you're going to find something in here, whether it's uh, astronomy, geometry, ma math, uh, town planning, house design, symmetry and temples in the human body, uh, classification of temples, uh, proportions of Doric, Doric, Ionic, how these um, temples were built, uh, acoustics of the site as well. So this is all, under the, whether it's ancient or modern temples, you're going to find this is basically the handbook from which the uh, modern architecture was based on. Ten books of architecture by Vitruvius. Talks about uh, how to find water, rainwater, uh, Aqueducts, the zodiac and the planets, phases of the moon. Also machines, so lifting machines, hoisting machines, the elements of motion, engineering for raising water, the water screw, pumps. Um, you, you name it, it's pretty much in there. So this is the Roman books of architecture uh, and they describe they, that not only that they could build the machines, that they understood the principles behind them. And that's an important part. They were... Um, much clever. Now this is from a Roman architect who often re who referenced the Greek machines who come before and where did the Romans and Greeks learn their stuff from? The Phoenicians, the Egyptians and the Indians amongst others. The Romans and the Greeks did not suddenly spring up out of the ground all these inventions. These are part of an ancient legacy going back to uh, most of the heavy stones, the heaviest stones lifted in Egypt go back towards the um, Middle Kingdom around that period around 1300 to 1000 BC, they, were, they, the Greeks and Romans, was much, much closer to the Egyptians who were moving these massive obelisks and stones than what we, what they are to us. And the Romans, for instance, lifted massive Egyptian obelisks, moved them much further than what the Egyptians did. They took them across the Mediterranean, took them across land much further than the Egyptians did, and then lifted, lifted them up. And they describe how they did, how, how these things were achieved. And this is this literally is from ancient descriptions. All the elements are in there. This is ancient technology. It's wood and rope. If iron was used in any part, well, uh, the Colossi of Memnon and uh, the uh, ladder and obelisk, or the that was moved during the Iron Age. So Egyptians had access to iron at that time. Uh, but you don't need iron. The, the pins and the axles could be replaced either with bronze or even red cedar which the Egyptians had and were importing going back to the old kingdom so every element which is not strictly um, ancient in these machines could be replaced by an ancient part it's not necessary to have any modern technology to lift this this was lifted and it is a twin now it's again this joke over these people like you'll talk about the treasury of Atreus and that there's a 200 ton stone there oh it can't be lifted with ancient technology even modern cranes can't do it absolute rubbish modern cranes could do it with a so so easy 
there are actually appliances I used to work in industry there is a chain hoist where a single person pulling on a chain can lift 100 ton two people uh, up, um, with, uh, could lift this in the modern times you don't need a crane that exact technology to make these uh, chain hoists existed back in the ancient times as well and can be found as evidence uh, for, for it's undeniable that they understood mechanical advantage back then so it's to to lift 200 tons it's actually very you need very few people because mechanical advantage this is um, that's Cleopatra's needle in London as it was in Alexandria uh, they were moved to Alexandria by Cleopatra who was uh, at the very uh, Ptolemaic Egypt which is essentially not essentially was exactly the same time as Caesar at Mark Anthony and some of these other amazing Roman lifts as well but uh, the Romans move these obelisks as we'll see as well this is Cleopatra's needle in New York age of photography there is no doubt no dispute that they were able to lift and move a 220 or a, let's just say pounds again 440,000 pound obelisk move it and lift it using these these appliances uh, no um, animals would have been necessary mechanical advantage a surprisingly small number of men pulling on on the ropes can lift many many times their own force using mechanical advantage uh, pulleys and winches um, that's and these were known in ancient times as well so again th this ancient aliens stuff is 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 100 percent wrong in regards to their how they discuss lifting ca capacity because this technology as we'll see was used much earlier uh, Luxor obelisk I've just photoshopped the obelisk back in place because it is now in Paris it is 280 tons or 560,000 pounds if that weight makes you okay so 560,000 pounds now how did they do it exactly again winches pulleys no need of steam no need of any modern crane lifting technology because modern actually modern lifting technology and cranes are just built on this all they've did is swap a uh, hemp rope for wire rope and they've attached a motor to it and when you see a crane lifting that motor can lift nowhere near the weight that it's pulling it's by using a pulley system it gets mechanical advantage so just remember if you see a crane the motor the uh, the engine cannot lift the weight that it's lifting it has to use a system of pulleys to get mechanical advantage this is just a, a fact of lifting and a lot of commentators who talk about lifting capacity simply have no idea no they zero knowledge in this topic yet they make claims which are absolutely false based on zero knowledge uh, go to sleep mate because you don't know what you're talking about this goes back to 1588 the Lateran obelisk um, again I oh, can't lift the world anyway it's uh, as it stands now it's 330 tons I keep seeing people say it's 200 tons or less I don't know whether they can't uh, Google or whether uh, they have to tell fibs to reduce this lift because this this is very problematic to the narrative of lost high technology because it basically debunks it because the, the whole argument is based that you can't lift these stones with, without modern lifting equipment absolute bunk this is how it was done back in 1588 this was built on a reconstruction of older technology for instance now it's 105 feet originally it was closer to 118 feet uh, in the brought to Rome in the fourth century back then it weighed 455 tons 910,000 pounds that's nearly a million pounds was the original weight of it um, it collapsed between the uh, I think around the fifth century part the it was partially broken and then it was removed and exhumed but the, the the broken part we still know yeah you know what I mean it's still um, connected uh, not connected sorry but still uh, well we know what happened to it and and then it was put back up Pope Sixus V 1588 no machinery necessary all it was was compound pulleys and here we see animals now one of the constant things is oh but they didn't have uh, horses back then well they had cows cows go back to the earliest period of Egypt uh, basis of their economy and their half or you know for instance so you could just replace horses for cows so when they say they didn't have pack animals this is just, it's a pack of bollocks it's a load of bollocks um, but also so it can be done and it has been done and it can be replicated it was written about it was described you can lift these stones the original obelisk the base the plinth um, 
had a dedication to um, uh, Constant, uh, Constant, was it Constantine? Uh, I forget the exact emperor's name, but how it was moved and erected was described, and based on that, as well as other works, such as by Vitruvius, who describes in detail the principles behind these lifting technologies and how they apply, they were able to reconstruct this. This uh, Neither the New York and um, or Paris or the London obelisk were moved using newly invented techniques. They were all, just like in 1588, who were using ancient technology. There was no modern technology at that time. Uh, they were using uh, wood and rope and winches, and you could just swap out horses for animals, horses for oxen, but you don't even need them because we, this machine had a mechanical advantage of 632 to 1. So for one kilo of energy pulling or turning the winch, you got 632 kilos in return. This is how mechanical advantage works. Uh, it's not... It's not anti-gravity technology it's the basis in physics and lifting technology mechanical advantage it just is and it was known and it was described um, you can do uh, so as back originally when you still had this extra 13 feet at the bottom that was 455 tons so the largest stone uh, it's not this is not actually the largest stone that was ever moved because think at the Ramesseum there was a one a little bit heavier a statue however um, here at Baalbek, this stone which cannot be lifted. Now I might point out that these are 350 tons and some of these experts used to say that this could not be lifted. Now they, they've, they've backed away from that claim. These high priests of, of ancient knowledge have suddenly re discovered Rome and uh, Roman techniques, but now, now they're backing off from that. But they're sort of still sticking to this one. Well, two lifting towers has the Romans used could have lifted that. So we don't know if the Romans do, did it, um, there are no records of it existing before Roman times. The Romans don't describe moving, the, moving it themselves. We don't know, but neither do we know. With, there's no evidence at all to say it existed before Roman times either. So, you know, you know if one evidence doesn't work, but the other one does, well, that's a cult. That's your your bias is showing. So these ancient techniques have been resurrected and reused, and they work and they were written down. There is zero evidence for this. No evidence at all. Uh, there are some poetic interpretations of a couple lines, but uh, what we have is not only descriptions, ancient descriptions. Uh, Vitruvius, for instance, was only a thousand years separated um, from the uh, period where the, the largest Egyptian stones were moved, and uh, Colossi of Memnon and these other obelisks he was only a thousand now but we're 2,000 years removed from him these people were much closer to them they were they were inspired by so the Greek the Romans learnt from the Greeks the Greeks learnt from Persians and Indians and Phoenicians and Egyptians this is well known that they were the, the Greeks and Romans didn't just pop up out of the ground from from an empty slab and create these things so they, they were closer than what goes back so the argument for lost high technology base lives on the assertion that it was impossible to lift these stones with with uh, ancient technology and if that's the basis for it then there is no basis to it because it was possible and it's and all the principles and um and individual such as the ladder and obelisk um obelisk describe them in detail we know exactly what was happening so without a time machine we'll never ex exactly know how it was done there still could be a possibility that ancient lost high technology um, achieve those things, but there is no evidence for it. Zero. Yet there is lots of evidence and testable, you know, we can repeat the experiments and we can repeat the descriptions left to us by the agents to lift heavy stones. And it has been done and this does work. So those, uh, it's, you never hear about mechanical advantage unless it's to disparage it or say, well, oh, but there's no evidence of pulleys. Well, actually, there is evidence of pulleys. You just don't understand how pulleys work. So if the argument is it can't be done, therefore lost high technology can dismiss that claim entirely. If the Romans were smart enough, why weren't the Egyptians smart enough to work it out? There's No, no one blinks an eye if we suggest lost high technology. Roman, uh, Egyptian knot tying, if you can tie a knot, you can make a trucker's hitch, you can make uh, a pulley. It's, you don't need an iron wheel and a block. That's a compound pulley there. That's what you see here is exactly what you see here. You don't need this machinery. You just need some rounded 
uh, bits of wood and some oil and some rope and bang, away you go. You can lift stones. They did lift stones. 